Today at Pebble Beach, we're looking at a lot of classic cars, very important historic, significant automobiles, and hot rods, 32 Fords here at Pebble Beach. This is going to be great. Today, in the garage. Boy, this is really, really special because Pebble Beach is known for their classic cars, the most significant cars on the planet. And they've recognized the 32 Ford Hot Rod as a significant automobile, and they brought out these wonderfully historic cover cars. These, each one of these 32 Fords has been on a cover of a magazine, and they're all, they're very, very significant. And the, it just, I think it's because the 32 Ford is like the iconic hot rod car. When you think of a hot rod, you think of a 32 Ford. This is the image, and this is it. This is the car that started it all and it's just fantastic. And they have Chevy engines, flathead Fords, whatever. It just symbolizes to me classic American hot rodding. It's a distinctive American thing, hot rods. And people all over the world now love them. They've got hot rods like this in Italy, in France, in England. It's spread around the globe. And that's because <laughs> they're so darn cool. I'm here with my new friend Chris here looking at some 32 Ford hot rods at Pebble Beach Concord Elegance, and I'm so excited that these cars are here. You know, Pebble Beach is known for their classic cars, the Duesenbergs and so forth. Why do you think uh, 32 Fords deserve a uh, seat at the table here at Pebble Beach? Well, if you look at it, these cars are returning GI's interpretations of the things that they saw in the European theater. They were seeing Delages, Delahays, Bugattis, you know, all these exotic cars, sports cars over there, they came back. They wanted to have something that was cool and sporty, but the infrastructure didn't exist to produce new cars, and they didn't have a whole lot of money, but they knew these things because they grew up with Model Ts and Model As, so they just started buying all these cars, stripping them down to make their interpretations of those cars on their own terms. They want to go fast. They want to go fast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and a little bit of style. You could build this in your garage. You know, it's yeah. not it's not high tech. They just took a bunch of, I don't want to say threw a bunch of parts at it, but they no, carefully it, selected parts that they knew would work. You know, it was it was really that Yankee ingenuity. You know, it, it was if if you could find a big engine and a small car and you put those two together, you have a hot car. I mean, something that most other cars couldn't keep up with at the time. And what's uh, And so this this is the car. This is the car you brought here. Tell me a little yeah. bit about uh, about this car. So this was a car that belonged to a fellow named Gray Baskerville. He was an automotive journalist. He wrote for Peterson Publication, Hot Rod, Rod and Custom, and things like that. He kept it as an example, as an homage to his friend, a guy named Paul Horning. Paul Horning built this in the early 1950s, about 1953 and he was in his early 20s, late teens, early 20s. So this is an example of what a car looked like, roughly speaking, uh -huh. you know, 70 years ago. When the guys were actually doing this stuff, this is sort of what they were doing. And he maintained it as an example of the way it was to show people down, you know, future, like all the people here that, yeah. hey, this is the way it was. The, Restored cars are absolutely beautiful, but everybody who's restored any of these cars will tell you that's not the way they were. Yeah. You know, like I said, 20 year old kids 70 years ago, they didn't have air compressors, they didn't have TIG welders, they didn't even have welders. It was gas welding and things like that. And what's, uh, what's under the hood of this one here? So this one's got a 283 Chevrolet built by Jerry Kugel in the early 1970s. Nice. So the lineage on this car was it was built in 53. Thank you again. So it was Originally, of course, 1932 Ford Roadster. And then Paul built it as a congregation of parts that he picked out from the junkyard, literally. So he, he didn't start with a car, he started with bunches of parts of cars. Put it together, ran a flathead, you know, 39 Ford gearbox and all that stuff. He built it at a place called uh, M&V Automotive, which was Ernie Murashiga's place. Hot rodder, pioneer hot rodder, right. post-war hot rodder. And, uh, they slowly changed the car. It had got an Oldsmobile engine. Uh, they raised up the nose of it for better weight transfer. At one point, it had uh, American racing wheels on it. And he was street racing this car. And he got so many tickets that the judge forced him to sell the car for a dollar. So he sold the car for a dollar to his mom. <laughs> so when he got his license back, he, um, he 
got a 265 Chevrolet engine, and this is late 50s, uh -huh. got a 265 Chevrolet engine and a power glide transmission, bolted it in here, made it so he could like drive it around and not be tempted to go so fast. Yeah. His, his wife, you know, felt comfortable driving it and everything. So they, he had it that way for a while. And about that time, late, late 50s is when Paul and Gray met. And they became fast friends. They ended up having a race car with Ernie Mershiga and all that. Unfortunately, in 1966, Paul died in a motorcycle crash in LA. And Gray bought it from Paul's widow. And he, that's where he came in to preserve it as a standing piece of history, a kinetic piece of history. He actually drove this daily to his job. He worked at Peterson Publications for Hot Rod mostly, uh, and he drove it daily from about 68 until about 81. And then he, you know, realized that it's probably a little bit too precious to be taken down, you know, La Cienega in yeah. rush hour traffic. So then he, he kept driving the car extensively, but, you know, found other daily drivers. In 1975, he got together with Pete Shapouris and Jim Jacobs, Jake, of Pete and Jake's Hot Rod Parts. Uh -huh, sure. They were just starting up their company in 74, 75. And they offered to go through the chassis and clean up a little bit of it, make it a little bit more safe and roadworthy. Uh, at that same time, they had the car painted, had the upholstery done on it. It was red before, it had black upholstery. They just tweaked it a little bit. That was about 1975. And then um, uh, uh, Jerry Kugel from Kugel Components built the engine for a series that appeared in Rod and Custom and Hot Rod Magazine when they killed Rod and Custom called Chevy Up, and it was a 283. It was basically how to build an engine for a hot rod that's going to get decent fuel economy. <laughs> I'm doing a catch rush. Yeah, it's kind of that, uh, the 70s was kind of another renaissance for hot rods, and they were referring to them as street rods for a while. Absolutely. You know, that's when they started putting Jag rear ends in them and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, I remember. Uh, but this doesn't look like a street rod. It looks like a traditional hot rod. Well, it is. The funny thing is, this is a hot rod, and it is a street rod because it's a street-driven hot rod. Right. I mean, you saw that term used in the 50s. Tex Smith used that term. Yeah. Tom McMullen used that term. You know, all these uh, uh, all these writers had used this term over the, over the ages to, to describe a hot car that drove on the street. Yeah. So this is a street rod. In a sense, it's also a resto rod. Uh -huh. You know, in the fact that it's got steel wheels and an undropped headlight bar and yeah. all that stuff. It does have a lot of that other stuff. And the other thing also, what's significant about this car is it's technically the first, this is a bad word, but now it's a bad word, but it's a rat rod too. The fellow who owned it, Gray Baskerville, coined the term. It's based largely on the rat bike movement of the 70s, yeah. you know, where it's kind of like a shabby bike. And it was kind of like a term of endearment, you know, it referred yeah. to something that had, it was a little rough around the edges, because you have to imagine, in the 80s, there was no taking a car that was anything less than perfect to a car show. You yeah, so, out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, nobody, everything had to be stripped down and repainted and yep. perfect. Yep. And, um, the, it, which also removes part of the character of the car and the absolutely. history of the car. Absolutely. And that's, it's remarkable that this car survived. Yeah, that it didn't get, you know, yeah. that somebody didn't buy it, blow it apart, and completely redo it. Yeah. I mean, because how could you restore a car like this? Where do you take it back to without erasing half of its history? Yeah, putting a bunch of billet components on and stuff like that. And just, yeah. you know, it just it would ruin the look of this car. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it oh, you don't like the bullet. Okay. No, no, no. I, I do. Everything <laughs> it, has its place. Everything has its place. Well, and not, not, it. not on this yeah. car. Not on this car. You know, no, no, if no. You want to no, do no. a contemporary no. car from the, from the scratch? That's one yeah, thing. Exactly. But to put yeah. miscellaneous newer no, pieces on this. Miss the point. Yeah. Miss the point. And you see that happen too many times. You know. It, I worked yeah. for Street Rodder magazine. I've I've written for automotive industry for 20 years, and I would go to shops and I would find cars that were as intact as this but haven't been driven since 1957 and there's still the owners that had them and they'd take them to a street rod shop and tell them to just blow the thing apart and completely redo it as a completely modern car yeah. and we'd buy all the parts off of them and it was really sad because i'd rather see the cars stay together i mean does a car like this need a tilt steering column really no. you know here's the, here's the funny thing about tilt steering columns when you build a hot rod, you build it to fit you and nobody else. Yeah. That's the whole point of having a custom car is street right. rod. And to put a tilt steering in, it means that it can fit other people. Well, to hell with that. Right. Right. 
<laughs> it's for me, you know, or for right. him. This car fits him much better than it fits me. I have to sit sideways in it and yeah. kick my leg over to the side and I get cramps and, you know. So does this still have a power glide? This still does have a power yeah, glide? Yeah, look, and I only see two pedals. Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. It's got an aluminum power glide in it now. It got right. the aluminum power glide when it got the when it got the, uh, the 283. It had a 265 originally. Well, originally. In the late 50s, early 60s. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's another bulletproof transmission. Drag <laughs> drag racer special, you know. Super efficient. You know, yeah, I mean, I mean people used to say, ah, oh, it's got a power slide in it. I'm like, uh, no, hey man, that's that's a yeah. that's it's a good a training. Great transmission, yeah. great <laughs> transmission. And the other thing that this car is a great example of is in, this, in the hot rod, street rod market now, we tend to overbuild stuff. We box the chassis and tubular cross members and all this yeah. other stuff in there to make it stiff, to handle a lot of power. This has an unboxed frame. In other words, it's still just a C channel. Right. It's not been closed in. It doesn't even have a full K member in it. It's been hacked up to put the power glide in it. And it's got a tubular rear cross member just for the spring in it. It's got a 40 Ford spring in it. And it's kind of a, you'd never, most people wouldn't have the gall to build a chassis like this because it's not strong and it's not cool. Yeah. But this car goes down the road so nice. Yeah. I mean, it's like a, it's a cruiser. You know, yeah. it, it, it goes down the road just fine. But it's comfortable. Yeah, and I mean, it looks like he drove the car because look at the windshield wiper on it. So with the big old windshield wiper motor sticking sticking yeah. up. I mean, because he wanted to use the car. Well, there was that, and also legality. You'd get popped in L.A. if you didn't have a wiper motor. Oh. Things like that. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, this car has got about he reckoned about three hundred thousand miles on it. Uh, excellent. Done like this. <laughs> and it's got a lot I love of stickers it. and stuff to prove it. That's from, I believe that's from the 1996 Hot Rod Power Tour. I like this little decal here too. This is a cool one. This is a Tom Medley art piece. Yeah. Tom Medley was uh, Bob Peterson's first employee at Hot Rod Magazine. And he was absolutely legend. I mean, Tom yeah. Medley is, he was, this, this character is Stroker McGurk. And this character... He did everything, you yeah. know, any of the drag racing stuff that was coming up. They made cartoons with him in it and everything. He was the embodiment of the hot rod in the 50s. Yeah, it's like like earlier with the with the rat think. All yeah, that stuff, you know, well, big... this is even earlier than rat yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. Stroker, I think, came about in about 1951, 52, right around there. Yeah. Rat Fink came along in 63, 4. Yeah, Roth came a little later, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He did. But every bit is significant. I mean, not to knock, you know, not to say anything. Oh, no, yeah, no. Yeah, His yeah. stuff is great. We yeah. all love it. You yeah, know? but he, yeah, he, he was on the shoulders of giants, you know. Yeah. Doing that stuff. Well, this, that's so cool. Well, let's, oh, thanks so much for sharing this car hey, with me, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. And, uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the show and uh, thank you. Keep keep hot riding. Keep thank saving you. this car. Thank you. We will. We'll try our best. It's my father, Jim Shelton, and me, and uh, it. And Elizabeth Baskerville is here, uh, Gray's daughter. She's back there. And uh, yeah, it's it's. However, we can put it out there to get the word out. That's what we want to do. Awesome. Okay, that's our look at uh, our visit with this remarkable 32 Ford here at the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance. Looking at uh, this 32 Ford Hot Rod, which still doesn't still sounds kind of kind of uh, strange, you know. I'm looking at a 32 significant 32 Ford Hot Rod here at the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance. I love that man. It's awesome. Bringing down the property yes, value. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the hot rods have invaded the lawn. That's, it. <laughs> that's right. Right. <laughs> okay, man. We'll catch you next time in the garage. Nous avons rejoint le concours d'élégance de Pebble Beach. Bah tiens, ça tombe bien, on va rester dans l'icône américaine avec les caravanes Airstream. Vous savez, ce sont des caravanes toutes en aluminium. Ils ont fait rêver, hein.